One of my main driving forces to go public with uh, my prostate cancer diagnosis is to helpfully educate and hopefully save lives, especially for African-American men who are twice as likely to die from this disease. So uh, this morning, I've asked my surgeon, Dr. Vincent Ladone of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center to join us and his colleague, Dr. Carol Brown. She's also a cancer surgeon and the chief health equity officer at MSK as well. Dr. Brown's making it her life's work studying disparities in prostate cancer and other cancers between African Americans and their white counterparts. Mm -hmm. Good morning to both of you. Thanks for being here. We appreciate this. Good morning. Good morning now. And, and uh, Dr. Yes. Dr. Ladone, if I could start with you. First of all, this is actually the first time I've actually seen your whole face. <laughs> uh, because every time I, I disappoint you. No, you're a handsome man. That smile. Every time Great I went smile. in to see you, he had the mask on. So this is great. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, we talked about the different modalities of whether uh, it was going to be radiation or surgery. Uh, and we know the one thing that I, I wasn't uh, a candidate for active monitoring. Can you explain what that is and why it was not right for me? Right. So not all prostate cancers are the same. They differ in terms of aggressiveness, in terms of the extent. And so for each man who has prostate cancer, we have to determine exactly how aggressive his cancer is and what the extent of it is. And on that basis, we can choose the appropriate treatment. And for many men with what we call low risk or non-aggressive prostate cancer, active monitoring or what we call active surveillance may be the best choice. Uh, unfortunately, in your case, your, your cancer was a little bit more aggressive, and so we recommended treatment. And you would have been a candidate for surgery, for radiation, or for some of the other uh, many treatment modalities we have for prostate cancer. But after a long discussion uh, with you and with your partner, uh, we ended up choosing surgery as the right way to go. Hey, hey, Dr. Ladone, Craig Melvin here. How, how, rigorous, um, how rigorous is this kind of surgery? And what will Al's recovery, what will it look like? How long will it last? Yeah, so uh, Al will come in on the day of his uh, surgery. Uh, the surgery itself will take about three hours. Uh, we do it with a robot, so it's called minimal, minimally invasive surgery. It's essentially laparoscopic oh. surgery with the addition of the robot. Um, most folks spend one night in the hospital and then go home the next morning. Uh, recovery for this will, will take about four to six weeks to get him back to doing most of the things that he normally does. And of course, along the way, we'll be monitoring him carefully and uh, helping him with that recovery. Um, but as you may have heard, uh, he's, he's done a lot of the things that he needs to do already. Al's got himself in good shape. He's well prepared, both mentally and physically, for this. And that makes a huge difference. As, as Dylan said earlier, a positive attitude really is one of the, 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 the keys to success with any treatment. It's important. Dr. Brown, let me bring you in here. Al was just talking about the fact that he knows he's lucky and fortunate uh, and blessed, frankly, to have access to health care, which has helped him find this prostate cancer. But why are so many men, and particularly African-American men, not getting screened for prostate cancer? So thank you so much, Chanel. I think it's really important to take this opportunity, as Al mentioned, to educate the public about prostate cancer, and we want to send a special, special message out there to African-American men and the people who love them. Mm. And that is that there is screening for prostate cancer, and screening saves lives. Unfortunately, about nine years ago, one of the government bodies that talks about cancer screening tests made a recommendation that the PSA, the blood test that Al got that led to his diagnosis, did not need to be routinely done for any men. And I think one of the reasons that African-American men still have a lower rate of screening than Caucasian men is that that misinformation that screening is not valuable or helpful in prostate cancer is still out there among many of the doctors and providers who should be doing this screening. Dr. Brown, can, I, ask, can, can, I, can I jump in there a second? So uh, generally it's it's considered 50 is that when you should start. But you you think it really should be 40, especially for African-American men, right? Absolutely. So as you mentioned, African-American men are twice as likely to die and they're 50 percent more likely to get prostate cancer. 
and they should start screening at Sloan Kettering recommend this, and so does the American Cancer Society and many other groups. African-American men should start screening at age 40, and all men between age 40 and 45. Uh, Dr. Ladon, like... And to be clear, Dr. Brown, oh, I'm sorry, just okay. to be clear, that's regardless of family history, right? Absolutely. So for African-American men, because they're at higher risk, and they're at higher risk of having a more aggressive type of cancer, no matter what their family history, they should really talk to their physician about starting screening at age 40. And for all men, it should be between the age of 40 and 45. Uh, if you do have a family history, then you should also start screening at age 40. And, and one more question, Dr. Brown. Why are African-American men, for some reason, more likely to uh, get this and, and more likely to die from it? So we're learning that with prostate cancer and many other cancers, it actually probably isn't all about access. And there probably are some differences in the biology of the type of cancer that African-American men get. And there's actually a lot of great research going on. In fact, um, there are two very large uh, studies going on to get African-American men enrolled so that we can study their prostate cancers on the molecular level mm. and try to understand what are the genes that are driving their cancers to be more aggressive. So we really think that the answer partially lies in the biology of the tumor, and it can be the effects of stress and the environment on the cancer genes that is causing this worse outcome in African-American men. And, and Dr. Ladon, I, I just want to ask specifically about that PSA test. I know, Chanel, you were talking about you need to schedule your mammogram, but it can be an uncomfortable mm -hmm. test. Is the PSA test uncomfortable, or is, is it an easy test? Yeah, the PSA test is nothing more than a uh, standard blood test. So for anybody that's had a blood test of any sort, it's no different than that. So it really is a very simple test to, uh, to obtain. All right. Well, Dr. Ladone, uh, thank you so much. We appreciate it. I'll, I'll see you next week. And uh, Dr. Brown, thanks so much for this great information. And we'll continue to follow this as, as it goes along. Thanks so much. And guys, thank you for the love. Really appreciate it.